Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, distinguished leaders, guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, number 30 open forum of this year, United Nations Internet Governance Forum. The theme of this open forum is Intelligent Society Governance Based on Experimentalism. I'm Fang Zhang from the Institute of, for Intelligent Society Governance at Tsinghua University, China. I will be the on-site moderator of today's forum. First of all, on behalf of the organizer, I would like to extend my warmest welcome to all the guests and the participants here and online. Today we are very honored to have six guests with us. Four of them will join with us online. They are Mr. Wang Jiang, uh, Deputy General Director of the of Bureau of the Information Technology Development Cyberspace Administration of China, Professor Su Jun, Dean of the Institute of Intelligent Society Governance and the Director of the Think Tank Center of Tsinghua University, uh, Mr. Alexandro uh, Texero, Special Advisor to the President of the BRICS New Development Bank, and he is also the former Minister of Tourism of Brazil, uh, Mrs. Huang, Ms. Huang Cui, Dean of the Institute of National Intelligent Society Governance, Zhejiang University. She is also professor at the School of Public Administration and the director of the Development of Information Resource Management of Zhejiang University. Uh, we also are uh, very honored to have another two dear guests who join with us on site. Uh, they are Mr. Uh, Simon Marvin, a professor at the Urban Institute of the University of Sheffield and also a professor at the Sydney School of Architecture, Design and Planning. Uh, and we also have Mr. Xu Zhiyuan, Deputy of uh, Chief Engineer of China Academy of Information and Communications Technology. We also have officers, experts, and scholars who are joining us at the Cyberspace Administration of China and the Tsinghua University in Beijing sites. Uh, warmly welcome everyone. Uh, as we have uh, um, shown on our website, this open forum will focus on various governance uh, pilots and policy experiments carried out by both developed and developing countries in artificial intelligence and other emerging digital fields. The discussion will be around how to improve the governance model and how to keep up with the rapid development of generative artificial intelligence technologies based on cross-national experience. We have already invited six distinguished experts and scholars today to share and exchange ideas in the field of intelligent society governance. We hope we can pour their efforts and brainstorm together to contribute wisdom and policy implications to intelligent society governance. Now please allow me to invite Mr. Wang Jiang, uh, Deputy General Director of the Bureau of Information Technology Development, Cyberspace Administration of China, to deliver a speech. Welcome. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the 18th IGF Open Forum themed Intelligent Society Governance Based on Experimentalism. I'm delighted to get together with you all here. On behalf of the Information Informatization Development Bureau of the Cyberspace Administration of China, I'd like to thank you for your participation, especially thank Japan, the host country of this year's IGF, for its diligence and dedication to this forum. In today's world, a new round of scientific and technological revolution, industrial transformation represented by the artificial intelligence and other technologies is promoting the rapid development of economy and society. In particular, the emergence of intelligent technologies such as chat GPT posed unprecedented opportunities and challenges to human beings with its powerful computing and learning ability. Intelligent technologies affecting all aspects of economic and social development in a more extensive and effective way and empowering human beings to enter a new intelligent society. Exploring a path for intelligent society governance 
will become a major and urgent proposition of the era. We encourage all parties to strengthen the research and development of AI technology while focusing on addressing ethical issues to balance technology progress and social stability. The Chinese government attached to the innovation of AI and its influence on social development. Chinese President Xi Jinping pointed out that AI is an important driving force for the new round of the scientific and technological revolution and industrial transformation and called for promoting deep integration of AI with economic and social development and propelling the healthy development of a new generation of AI in China in recent years. China has made great efforts on intelligent society governance in 2021. We started at the building internal basis for intelligent society governance around the key livelihood areas such as education, healthcare, and early early care. Selected hundreds of application scenarios and explored for operation models, laws, and regulation standards, and the forms of policy systems, institutional mechanisms for intelligent society in advance, which has achieved initial results. Taking this opportunity, I would like to share with you some thoughts on intelligent society governance and of our ongoing work. Firstly, we advocate a strong push for AI-empowered public services, strengthen the integration of AI with public services such as elderly care, education, health care, social security, and sports, and leverage AI technology to enhance public services and social governance level of our government departments to meet the needs of a safeguarding and improving people's livelihood and creating a better life for people. Secondly, we suggest strengthening the research and prevention of potential risk during AI development, promoting studies on AI-related laws, ethics, and social issues, establishing and improving laws and regulations to ensure the healthy development of AI, formulating ethical norms for intelligent society governance and earnestly safeguarding people's interests in national security. Certainly, we encourage international exchanges and cooperation on intelligent society governance under the philosophy of building a community of a shared future for mankind. We should adhere to the principle of attack for social good, facilitate, facilitate agile governance, inclusive sharing of intelligent society, and achieve different development and win-win cooperation among countries. China is willing to share our experience of uh, the intelligent society governance experiment with other countries actively contribute China's solution and learning from each other to complement our comprehensive strength. And today, from the forum, we have a built a good communication platform for global intelligent society governance. We have uh, Professor Simon Marvin from University of Sheffield, Mr. Alexandro Golombi Swiski, Texas, uh, is Special advisor to the president of a BRICS New Development Bank, Professor Su Jun from Tsinghua University, Professor Huang Cui from Zhejiang University, and Deputy Chief Engineer Xu Zhiyuan from the China Academy of Information Communities Te Communications Technology. I hope that all participants will brainstorm and inspire each other with your great minds and uh, discuss around the best practice for intelligent society government in the future. And we're willing to strengthen cooperation and in the world guide uh, the multi holders to actively engage, work together to facilitate a beneficial development of AI and jointly build intelligent society with human care. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Director Wang Zhang for his wonderful speech. Our interpreter is in such a pace that it really reflects uh, the rapid development of uh, the artificial intelligence, which highlights the importance of the topic today. Now I will invite uh, Professor Su Jun, uh, Dean of the Institute of Intelligent Society Governance of Tsinghua University, to give a speech on challenges and empirical, e empirical experience in intelligent society governance. Uh, please welcome. Dear experts, scholars, ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to participate in the 18th IGF Open Forum to share with the friends from the all of the world about the experience of intelligent social governance and the achievements. Currently, a new round of technological revolution and industrial transformation driven by AI is rapidly promoting the reconstruction of the global innovation landscape the reshaping of a civilization order and the intelligent transformation of a human society. Human beings are transforming from a traditional industrial society to an intelligent society based on technical progress and intelligent revolution. And the intelligent society has touched various parts of the world. The people from different countries and regions have actively explored and accumulated rich practical experience in intelligent social governance based on the actual situation of uh, each region. For example, in Africa, artificial intelligence technology helps farmers to predict the weather, analyze crop growth, and serve the agricultural development. 
in South America. Artificial intelligence technology helps doctors to detect early tuberculosis and promote human health. In Southeast Asia, artificial intelligence technology has provided support for people in education fields such as language learning and skill training, transforming the learning pattern of mankind. In recent years, various regions in China have also extensively carried out the practice of using AI technology to solve social problems. In an ordinary community in the northern city of Erdos in China, an information technology based point evaluation system has inspired residents to participate in a grassroots level of governance for the public virtual. Rowing together the points is the cohesion of the community and uh, the accessibility of the public services in the vast and sparsely populated grassland and uh, pastoral areas. The intelligent ranching technology, such as uh, the sheep faced facial recognition, automatic feeding, and electronic fences, have overturned people's imagination of uh, grazing life. And herders have moved from the saddlers to screens, and with improvement of pastoral production efficiency, there has been a change in the production organization and lifestyle. And the beautiful mountain village of southern Zhejiang province rural e-commerce has reshaped the trust mechanism of rural society, enhanced the cohesion of the village, and at the same time, empowered the vulnerable groups in the rural areas, helping to achieve inclusive development in the countryside. On the vast black land, in the northeast China, intelligent sky land integrated remote sensing technology is used to carry out a multiple element and multi time period three dimensional monitoring, creating a smart agriculture demonstration model and achieving seamless connection between agriculture technology innovation and demonstration applications. Although the intelligent technology brings more precise and effective public services, allowing people to enjoy the modern convenience and efficiency. At the same time, the transformation of the intelligence society has also brought serious problems and challenges to the legal privacy, moral ethics, public governance, and other aspects of human society. Bridging the digital divide and narrowing the digital gap are obstacles that humanity must overcome when moving towards an intelligence society. Last year, ChatGPT emerged with a great impact and systematic transformation on three basic operating mechanisms of human society. First of all, ChatGPT will reshape the knowledge production, inheritance, and verification mechanisms of the human society. AIGC is not about generating content, but about generating knowledge. In the long-standing mechanism of knowledge generation, human subjectivity, intelligence, and initiatives have been established. Um, the core position of humans in knowledge production has been formed. However, EIGC has broken the central subject position of a human in knowledge production, promoting significant changes in the subject mode and the form of knowledge production. The traditional mechanism of academic community criticism and verification of knowledge has been completely overturned. Secondly, ChatGPT will overturn the trust mechanism of human society. Trust is the cornerstone of a human society. The emergence of ChatGPT forces us to start thinking about whether AI has taken on the realistically dominate position in trust methods. The emergence of the humanoid artificial intelligence has made trust increasingly fragile and lacking, and even may challenge and or replace humanity as the central subject to the traditional trust system, changing the traditional trust mechanism from the bottom. Thirdly, ChatGPT will deconstruct the authority generation mechanism of human society. As human develops a dependence on AI, strong artificial intelligence will first establish knowledge authority, gradually developing traditional authority and even the crisp authority and the controller of the strong artificial intelligence can gain supreme authority and absolute monopoly power, thereby affecting human value judgments and ideologies and challenging the existing governance systems. Faced with the risks and challenges that are the new technology represented by ChatGPT will bring, we need to respond with prudence, confidence, and positive attitude using scientific and evidence-based method to comprehensively analyze and promote its healthy development. On the basis of long-term research, my colleagues and I took the lead in launching the initiative of conducting an AI social experiment and exploring the path 
of uh, the intelligent social governance in China in 2019. This initiative has received strong support and active participation from the Chinese government, industry, and academia, and it has been officially included in the national policy documents. Now, China has established 92 national intelligence social governance experimental bases in 22 provinces across the country and conducted an artificial intelligence social experiment in 18 pilot zones for innovation and development of AI in the country. Tsinghua University has established the Intelligence Social Governance Research Institute and has carried out long cycle tracking, observation, and research on the topics such as AI enabled urban and rural governance, digital addiction in cyberspace, and the generative AI and the reshaping of the knowledge production process following the research paths of AI social experiments. Meanwhile, Tsinghua University as the main organization of the Secretariat has set up a national standardization technical organization, national standardization working group on the um, social application, the evaluation basis of intelligent technology and has promoted the pre-study and the drafting of national standards. Dear friends and experts, the world is in a situation of great changes unprecedented in a century, and we are on a new journey towards an intelligent society. At present, the topic of intelligent society governance has been included into IGF for two consecutive years, indicating the high recognition and affirmation of international community for this work with the rapid development of information technology. The problems of wealth gap, environment and climate change and refugees or as well as poverty and the conflict in regions are the still common challenges in front of us promoting the wide application of smart technologies and intelligent technologies and building a smart society with a humanistic temperature will be important to meet these challenges. And we should further enhance the capacity building of intelligent society governance globally, especially in developing countries and regions. We should use AI technology to promote public services and contribute to social equality, healthcare, energy conservation, and emission reduction. We should further strengthen academic cooperation and exchanges in the field of intelligent society governance, widely organized, open, diversified, and inclusive academic conferences, and explore actively the standardization so that we can uh, draw upon the advanced practices and the best practices so as to apply the uh, theories and practices. That's all for my presentation. Thank you very much for your listening. Great. Uh, uh, thanks to Professor Su Jun for his very inspiring uh, talks on China's intelligent society governance experiments. Um, now, uh, let's give the floor to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Simon Marvin, professor at the Urban Institute of the University of Sheffield and professor at the University School of Architecture, Design and Planning. His topic is uh, Urban Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, Comparative Learning from Experiments. Let's welcome. Uh, please use the microphone, please. OK, thank you. Sorry, I'm not used to talking into a microphone. Um, yeah, it's thanks very much to the Institute for the invitation to talk to you today. And it's been great to be able to attend this conference to, to hear some of the latest thinking about digital technologies. In this session, what I want to do is, did, did, did many of you go to the first session this morning, the, the introductory session? If so, I thought it was really it was a really interesting snapshot of the state of the debate about urban AI and emerging technologies. I thought it was really interesting. But one of the things that struck me was that it didn't really say very much about where do these emerging technologies happen. And I was just thinking there, I'm, a, I'm an uh, urban geographer, so I'm interested in the in interrelationship between technological change and urban life. And given the importance of the SDGs, particularly SDG 11, which is clearly quite important in this uh, workshop in terms of the debates, uh, it's in interesting where does the urban and where does the community come into this agenda? Because when you think about it, these technological systems we're talking about, they accrete and they layer 
and we experience them through our interaction with private, retail, insurance, and public services, health, and education in particular places. So I'm quite interested in trying to understand how technological change shapes the possibilities of how we live our lives in the future. And there's a couple of books with colleagues that we've done. The, 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 one, uh, the red one, Urban Operating Systems, is available free as a free download from MIT Press if anyone's interested. So I'm not trying to sell any books in putting that to you. Um, so what I'm particularly interested in is I think if we'd have been talking at this conference five years ago, we'd have been talking about smart cities and smart technologies. And I'm really intrigued how the debate has shifted. So there's a big debate at the moment, partly with the Hiroshima uh, protocol that's being developed around AI technologies. But actually, if you look at some of the sessions and if you look at the exhibition down, downstairs, there's actually quite a lot around robotics, about technologies that interface with humans, not on screens, but actually in person, face-to-face -face technologies. And I'm particularly interested in this shift that's taken place from smart to AI and to robotic technologies and the way the urban context is being seen as a site of demonstration, experiment, experimentation and living labs and some of the challenges that that represents as these systems start to become integrated with healthcare, urban planning, education, policing robots. And this question of sort of like how does how do how do these new technologies interact with the urban what what needs to change in the urban context to fit robots so there's lots of discussions and debates about the the spatial congestion of urban areas as being very difficult for robots to negotiate and navigate but more interestingly how do they how do they relate to questions of urban management urban monitoring facial recognition, the use of sensors, and a whole series of decision-making technologies that claim to be able to more efficiently and effectively um, make urban life safer, more secure, um, more resilient. Now, I think all of these claims need to be subject to some scrutiny. And I think in order to do that, we need this comparative perspective that's informed this particular session. And I think what's interesting, when you start to look internationally, nation states who are prioritizing the development of AI and robotics often utilize their urban system and their urban context as test beds. So Japan's very interesting. Japan has this system called TOKU, T-O-K-U, which is a series of national strategic sites where the regulatory system for planning, uh, for uh, uh, employment legislation is, is suspended so that companies can experiment with robotic uh, systems. It's a, really, it's a really interesting attempt to try to constitute spaces of innovation that are ho it hopes that, that learning can then accelerate the development of the Japanese economy. And there's a number of examples of the use of these um, in, in autonomous vehicles, drones, delivery systems, particularly health, social care, and uh, policing robots. Now, I think what this signals is that the urban context is actually seen as really quite important by nation states in providing sites to learn about how these systems, are the claims of these systems realized in practice, or what new problems start to occur when you roll out these technologies. Another example is Smart Dubai, which has this very ambitious uh, program to infuse AI into the fabric of the city's operating systems using groundbreaking technologies as a blueprint for exciting futures. Now, Dubai doesn't have an indigenous local AI and robotics capacity. So there, the testbed is constituted through inviting international companies to come and demonstrate and test these technologies in the Dubai context. So a very different system for, for, for trying to work through the possibilities of these technologies and a very particular set of, of application focuses to the work that they do. The other example we've been doing work in is San Francisco. Because of its proximity to Silicon Valley, 
has a really um, large number of uh, innovative delivery and robotic companies who want to experiment with their robots in the streets of, of San Francisco. Well, there's a very active uh, public and civic movement who wants to protect those streets. And there's been really quite interesting conflicts around the use of robotics for delivery, for policing robots, even robots being attacked in the streets because people are very unhappy about these. And in that context, San Francisco City has attempted to develop an emerging technology working group to try to think about ways of regulating these sorts of systems. So clearly there's very different ways in which these, can, these systems can be applied and huge diversity in the regulatory system um, that, that the regulatory system is being invented almost as these systems are being tested and demonstrated in real time. I think that's highly problematic. So what are the implications of this? I think we need, res we, well, it's, it's a research and a societal issue. And that's what I liked about the call that the Institute had done for this session. It requires a research agenda about what do these, what do these sorts of emerging technologies mean? How do we identify the leading cities that are experimenting with these applications and why? And we need to do that comparatively across very, very different contexts, as you've seen from some of these experiments. And what can we start to learn from these move first mover experiments that might inform how we, how we regulate and manage these technologies? Now, why does this matter? It matters for three reasons. These applications have generally so far been very limited. But actually, there is more, more higher levels of experimentation. There's new geographies, new entrants, and new coalitions emerging around that. The, the regulatory issues are not really... Uh, the regulatory issues are being made up. There's a sort of disrupt... It's a little bit like the Airbnb issue of these disruptive technologies that preempt the, the, the constitution of a regulatory framework. So we need to learn from these test beds and regulatory zones. And I think this points... Um, as, as Professor Zhu talked about a post-human city in which we need to really understand how the relationship between human and machinic decision-making is being changed and how we don't necessarily see those as being very simple black and white changes, but what level of human oversight and human input do we want to include in these systems? And the critical importance is how we do that and assist where we learn comparatively across these different contexts. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, thanks to our professor, uh, Simon Marvin, for his great uh, talk, which actually uh, helped us to uh, point out the future direction for the application of artificial intelligence and robot robots in urban governance. Uh, next, let's welcome Mr. Alexandro uh, Texero, uh, the special advisor to the president of the BRICS New Development Bank. And also, he is a distinguished professor of the School of Public Policy and the Management of Tsinghua University. Let's welcome him to give a speech. Welcome. experimentalism. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about insights from a cross-country experience. And, and, and that's very, very important because uh, when we are talking about intelligent society, there is a concept. The world is facing difficult moments, especially uh, the last development relations uh, lately, uh, with the necessity to improve its development conditions. And of course, the concept of intelligent society, where we use more efficiency, uh, our resources, it's very important. But I would like to start saying that the development of science technology is the incentive uh, for us to achieve an intelligent society. One of the tools or key drivers uh, for this is what we call artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is the enabler for our society to, to have this profound transformation and change uh, the human social behavior and also the integration, not only 
between the humans, but also with our environment. So uh, these elements that makes intelligent society important is changing not only our living space, but basically raising a new form of civilization that we can understand a little bit uh, better in, in the near future. An intelligent society is based, as I said, in artificial intelligence as the, the first and one of the main pillars or driving forces is based also on the data as the resource area where we get data from different locations and also the internet as the carrier. Uh, this moment that we are discussing the future of our society is based on the digital economy and digital data processing. So the digital data processing is the foundation. And I'm going to give you some examples that is going to change forever the way the humans communicate to themselves and communicate with the different things. The internet of everything or the internet of all things are completely changing the way that we live our lives. So there is a big question. How is going to be the society of the future. Hopefully, the society of the future is going to be intelligent. Why? Number one, because a social organization pattern is different from what we call industrial society in two basic aspects. The number one is that what we call highly integrated society. Uh, let's go back 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and see how we interact with your, ourselves. Let's see that probably 20 years ago was not possible I'm being in another country talking to you today. This integrative society is based on inter intelligent technology that makes our life easier, more comfortable, and faster. But we can never forget that behind this artificial intelligence is the human intelligence. We can only build robots, internet of things, artificial intelligence, process data, if we have the volume of human intelligence. So the driving force between the machine intelligence are still humans. Because there is a lot of talk, a lot of people ask, OK, the, the intelligent society of the future is going to be beneficial for human or we're going to deal with robots like these futuristic movies. And I always say that the two, the machine intelligence, can coexist with the human intelligence. And if the machines act in the way that is proper, is because we, as human, we can manage and delivery and program the machines to do that. So that's the first element highly integrate society. The second element is that the social structure evolution in restructuring. And when I say that, people normally ask, why, Professor Alessandro, we have a restructuring of our society? Because basically functions, for example, teaching, I foresee in the future that maybe I'm not sitting here. It maybe is going to be a robot with my face talking to you. And this evolution, not only machine learning, okay, is based because we are restructuring the way we teach, the way we learn. And this is a basic element of the intelligent society. The interaction between real and virtual society has created a new space for humanity, has created a new way of doing things. These interactions, replacing the traditional communication has impact our lives daily. And it's very, very, very easy to see that. I have a six years old child and she spends, if I let her, at least 50% of her time on the phone, on the social, uh, not only social networks, but also navigate in the internet and doing things that before I could not imagine, for example, doing e-commerce, buying things that she wants, or looking to the fridge and replace things that is missing, and she buying that with 
only 16 year, years old or talking to her friends, okay? So this new interpersonal communication okay, creates a new social and, and I would say interaction, not only between people, but uh, having more autonomy, adaptation, transparency, openness, get information faster. So all those elements are two basic functions or are two basic characteristics of this in intelligent society. Number one is the high integrate society, as I said. Number two is this new social structure or restructuring of the social uh, networks that you have. Of course, the big question about this is how this influence from my perspective, development. How this can change the way we see cities, provinces, countries. Of course, we have, and I'm gonna bring you some examples of how this is, is changing. As I said, it's changing our personal life, but also is trying, is trying to set a new set of rules in terms of development. A good example is that is the what Singapore has been doing in terms of the smart nation. Smart nation is an initiative by the government of Singapore uh, to use information and communications technologies, creating networks, create tech enabled solutions uh, to, to, to improve the life of the Singaporean citizens. One of the elements of this, of course, is what they call smart nation and digital government. And, and, and for that, they set up a government technology agency that is under the prime minister of Singapore and led to the nation's digital identity framework. So basically, the concept is to achieve a digital society, you need to have a digital economy and you need to have a digital government. So for example, try to integrate everything, to integrate using digitalization of the economy, bite by bite, system by system. This is strategic nation, a national project is the foundation of the future of Singaporean society. So someone can say, okay, professor, but Singapore is a small country, but that's a very good pilot for other initiatives that we have around the world. So in the case of Singaporeans, they, uh, they are thinking, okay, how can I make my business more digital? So we are saying go business strategy is to make all the business sector to access the government websites, portals, resources digitally. We have another element that is called Codex. It's a share of digital platform between government agencies, private sector, and that is very cost effective. E-payments. And then you have a finally one that the government is using is called Life SG that allows you to easily access government services. So for example, why you need to get out of your home to go to a, a, a bureau of the government to do your ID or to do your passport if you can upload everything. So the idea in Singapore is to use the government services and different spiritual spaces to make the life of the citizens more connected, easier. Of course, this is one of the examples of how you can do this, but there is a bunch of different examples in terms of trying to, to improve uh, not only the service from the government, but your life. Okay, uh, using a smart nation sensor platform that can help, for example, driving. Uh, I always tell uh, my, my, my students that the future of the car industry is not anymore like we imagined 10 years ago, 20 years ago, that when you go buy a car, you, you just need to, to, to look and see the engine. Now, when you go buy a car, what criteria you choose the car is not how many horses the car have is what kind of communication package, what kind of systems they have. So there is a convergence. A industry, a car industry is not anymore a mechanical industry. Now it's a, it's a technological uh, 
telecommunication industry. So those industries, they need to develop new capabilities. They need to communicate different. So probably in the future, the next generation will not buy a car. We're going to buy a drone. And the only way that this can work if we are fully integrated, if our sensors in the car, in the satellites, in the city communicate to itself. That's why it's one of the main bases of intelligent society. So we are talking about urban mobility. We are talking about intelligent housing. And this has everything to do with the possibility of another big issue that we are talking is about climate change. That is, and that's what we need to be sure, there is no improvement or no reduction of CO2 emissions without digitalization of the economy. And you're going to say, but why, Professor? Because we need an intelligent society to deliver the results we have. When we go back to the 70 SDGs that was set up quite a long time ago for the United Nations, and we realized that none of them we had achieved, one of the reasons is because we are not taking serious the next step of intelligent society. Only through intelligent society, only through using technology for good, we can do that. Uh, thank you so much for the, the invitation for this important event. And I hope we can come up with brilliant ideas for the future of our human race. Thank you very, very much. Uh, good. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, Professor Alexandros, uh, uh, such a passionate speech. Uh, now I will invite Professor uh, Huang Cui, uh, the Dean of the Institute of National Intelligent Society Governance at Zhejiang University, to give a speech. The title of the speech is China's e Experiment Exploration in Education Field. Uh, let's welcome. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity to communicate with you today and participate in the 18th IGF Open Forum. The topic for our forum is uh, the intelligent society governance based on experimentalism, experience from different nations. So I'd like to share with you some of the practical explorations of the thought of education governance in China. As it is known to all that a continuous deepening of integration of digital technology and education is driving the changes and ecological reconstruction in the global education thought. Since 2018, the Chinese government has released the China Education Modernization 2035 Education Informatization 2.0 Action Plan, as well as uh, the documents on promoting the construction of new education infrastructure, building a high quality education support system, guiding principles, as well as uh, other education reform. And the year 2022 is very important for the digital transformation of education in China. At the beginning of uh, 2022, at the National Education Work Conference, the action of implementing the digital education strategy has pr was proposed, was aimed to accelerate the digital transformation of education and support the high quality development of education with informatization of education. So this strategic plan emphasizes the demand-oriented approach, promoting the transformation of the educational concept and updating of uh, the educational paradigm, the innovation of uh, teaching processes and transformation of the evaluation method by widely applying intelligent technology to new infrastructure, educational resources, supply, teaching method, and educational governance, and other fields of education in order to promote educational fairness, achieve lifelong education, and form a virtual cycle of educational ecosystems. In the implementation of China's national education digitalization strategy, the National Smart Education Public Service Platform has played a key role. This platform was officially launched on March the 28th last year. Integrating resources from three dimensions, primary and secondary education, vocational education, higher education, and so on. At the same time, there is a 
a sub platform of uh, 24365 college student employment service platform, which includes student learning, teaching, and education governance, education innovation, and other functions. According to the data released by the Ministry of Education in May this year, more than ever since this platform was established in just one year, the National Smart Education Public Service Platform has received over 111.1 billion visits and has become the world's largest resource center and uh, service platform for digital education. And present, the platform has linked uh, about uh, 529,000 schools targeting 18.44 million teachers and 291 million students. The vast majority of the social learners have gathered 44,000 teaching videos from primary and secondary school resources and public service platform through national smart education has received recognition from various of aspects of society. And also has won the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize in 2022. So the National Smart Education Public Service Service Platform, which has achieved such great results in such a short period of time, there is a very important factor in it is that it has promoted the governance pilot experiment, conducting pilot experiments of various levels and the types nationwide. It has selected 15 provinces as pilot provinces and the 15 primary and the secondary schools as pilot platforms. It has selected six vocational education schools as pilots and also five higher education institutions were selected as the members of the pilot. And in higher education, Zhejiang University is one of the pilot schools actively promoting experiments in educational governance, exploring digital campus construction, digital supply of educational resources, and innovation in teaching methods. So these pilot and the programs at different levels and dimensions have continuously introduced their governance innovations in their practice. Taking Zhejiang University as an example, in practice, Zhejiang University has taken the lead with online Zhejiang University 2.0 and built a full process training system centered on student growth, relying on platforms such as Shredai Zhejiang um, app, and also it has built 800 smart classrooms covering public classrooms in various schools and has built more than uh, 50,000 online courses. And it can also directly record and live broadcast over uh, 1,200 uh, hours of courses every day. It supports the massive online provision of teaching resources, providing accessible guarantees for students uh, learning and across time at different areas. And uh, building on this, it has also done some new attempts on a global scale. Last year, Zhejiang University launched the Sustainable Development Go Summer School project, which focuses on sustainable development for a better future and fully utilizes digital technology to build a new smart education ecosystem. It has attracted students from major universities around the world, such as Zhejiang University, Cambridge, MIT, and Imperial College of London, a total of 971 students from 81 countries and regions attended this summer school. Through cloud platforms and internet, we conducted semantic discussions and took various series of courses around topics such as comprehensive and inclusive development and smart cities. The total number of course views during the entire summer of 2022 reached 464,000 with an average daily visit of 1,500 per course. During the summer school, this global affiliated platform can fully integrate into the global, into, uh, into the global innovation network platform of higher education, forming a replicable and a promotable platform due to time limit. So I'll, I'm not going to give you a deep dive into some of the cases. Perhaps there are various explorations and experiments in China in education governance. And they all have their own 
um, features such as the now I talked about the public service platform for national smart education launched at the national level as well as the programs we launched uh, in Zhejiang University and we help we hope that through our mastery of these potentials and opportunities we can work together to meet the challenges and uh, opportunities brought by the digital age exploit innovations through experiment and the governance practice so that we can build a more open, inclusive, and innovative society, integrity, new dynamism, and the resilience into the societal development. So it gives me a great pleasure to have this opportunity to talk to you. And uh, this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your listening. Oh, great. Uh, thanks for Professor Huang Sui's uh, uh, wonderful uh, talk. Uh, now I would like to invite our final speaker, Mr. Uh, Xu Zhiyuan, the Deputy, uh, Deputy Chief Engineer of China Academy of Information and Communications Technology to give a report on jointly promote artificial intelligent governance from rules to practice. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, maybe good night. Uh, uh, I'm here today to talk about promoting the transition of AI governance from rules to practice. As a key driving force in the new uh, round of technological revolution and industrial transformation, the development and application of AI technology is rapidly advancing. The explosive application of generative AI uh, represented by ChatGPT offers boundless uh, potential for the future development of the AI industry. Concurrently, uh, issues such as misinformation, academic uh, ethics, and job displacement uh, have ignited uh, global discussions, posing serious challenges have, uh, to existing governmental regulatory systems, industry ecosystems, and global governance coordination. Uh, based on prior research, I'd like to share three insights. Firstly, transitioning from abstract to concrete. AI governance is involved from principles to specific uh, rules and standards centered around the goals of trustworthiness, human centricity, and fairness. Countries worldwide emphasize a balanced approach, uh, implementing both uh, soft ethical guidelines and strict legal regulations. According to the latest uh, statistics from the OECD AI Policy Observatory, uh, over 800 AI-related policies have been released by 69 countries and regions in China, guided by official documents emphasizing tech ethics. We have uh, introduced drafts for technological ethical review and ethical guidelines for the financial tax sector. Additionally, China's legislative efforts in areas like algorithm recommendation, autonomous driving, and uh, uh, AIGC are paving the way for comprehensive overarching AI laws. The AI governance system is becoming increasingly complete. Secondly, uh, grounding in practice, AI governance is shifting from government-led uh, to a collaboration between government and enterprise. One, from a governance model's perspective, IGI governance has become a prevalent approach both domestically and internationally. Compared to traditional models, IGI, IGL Governance emphasize frequent interactions among stakeholders and flexible policy adjustments, better suited for the rapid evolution and high uncertainty associated with uh, new technologies. Two, 
when it comes to rule implementation, companies are at the forefront. For instance, TikTok introduced platform regulations for AIGC and the content labeling. Huawei has established a seven tier risk control system for AI products and the service. Third, from a technological tool center point, uh, the government enterprise and the research institutes collaboratively advocate technology governing technology, while the government focuses on safety baseline level monitoring and detection uh, technology. Enterprise proactively uh, develop governance tools like model defense techno te techniques and the research institutes explore technologies for explainability, explainability such uh, as attribution algorithm. Thirdly, embracing inclusive and uh, mutual benefits, we should strive to create a new paradigm for the sustainable development of AI. Development remains a common goal in AI strategy worldwide. Nations should uphold multilateralism and openness in AI, promoting a shared future for mankind. This involves fostering cross-cultural exchanges and cooperation, sharing best practice within frameworks like the United Nations, G20, and BRICS. China, with its practical uh, experience in areas like algorithm governance, deepfake management, and the user right protection, should engage in active dialogue to prevent misunderstandings. Furthermore, nations should collaboratively establish technical standards, enhance interoperability, mutual uh, recognition of rules, co-develop tech platforms, share tools and open data sites, and jointly explore institutional voice, such as AI legal status, uh, intellectual uh, property, and the liability distribution. In conclusion, AI governance has uh, progressed from conceptual discussions to the forefront of practical exploration. I believe that AI governance should involve multiple stakeholders, address multiple multi-dimensional objectives, integrate diverse values, strengthen global collaboration and dialogue, and aim to establish an inclusive and shared AI governance system. My speech is not generated by ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the translation is assisted by it. Thank you all. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Xu, for the uh, very inspiring and also enjoyable uh, uh, speech. Uh, I think right now, uh, all of our six experts has already uh, shared their experience uh, in intelligent society governance from different perspective and based on different uh, national experience. I think all of us actually are inspired to think more profoundly uh, more than uh, 80 years ago, the greatest, uh, uh, the great, the great uh, physicist and the thinker Albert Einstein said that uh, science, in its meaning, has never been so moral in nature and has never been so influential in the destiny of uh, humankind. In today's society. The rapid development of artificial intelligence technology is subversively reshaping human society at an unprecedented speed. Human society must actively utilize the artificial intelligence as an emerging technology while also tackle the risks and the challenges it brings. We hope this forum can become a new starting point for promoting intelligent society governance. 
we hope we can continue to strengthen international collaboration and also interdisciplinary research and it makes the application of artificial intelligence more humanistic, more human-centered, and it can better enhance human well-beings. Thank you. I think because of we have almost run out of time, and also we are going to, I think the, organize the, the, whole, uh, the host of the IGF already organized a music party at 7 o'clock. So we will just end here without any Q&A. Uh, I hope you will enjoy. Thank you. By the way, thank you all that uh, are participating at uh, uh, Tsinghua Wing and also those uh, uh, officers and experts from the Cyberspace uh, Administration in China and all those participate online. Thank you again. Bye.